today we're gonna build this. And it originated in our friend Patrick from Altshift asking a few questions when he was preparing this setup here, which I think is really beautiful and beautifully rendered as well. And I took some techniques learned from working on this setup and tried simplifying it a bit and using it to build this ball made out of rubber bands. And I think I managed to came up with a reasonably simple setup. So let's build this and as usual, drop down a geonode, dive in there and let's configure a collider first, the sphere around which we're gonna wrap our rubber bands, which well, is a sphere. Let's use the sphere create in Houdini 19. That is the same sphere node just set up to create polygons and let's just switch it to polygons to create a triangular mesh instead of primitives. I increased the frequency quite drastically to give a really high res sphere. And for some reason when preparing the setup, I decided to scale this to a uniform scale of 0.71. I don't know what reasoning led to this kind of decision. Let's just stick with it. And to this attach a null, which we're gonna call out underscore collider. Okay, that's gonna be the invisible sphere around which we're gonna wrap the rubber bands. Let's create the rubber bands by dropping down a tube. Let's set the view flag on here and also scale this to a radius scale of 2.5, a height of 0.3. Let's add four rows and set this to 72 columns. So we have almost square primitives here in this mesh and let's set the connectivity to triangles like this. Now, as you've seen in the animation in the intro, these rings will spawn randomly, randomly rotated. So let's take care of that using a transform node which we'll attach here. And under the rotation, we'll just use an expression using the rand function and feeding in the current frame number, multiplying it by some value, and then 3600 to randomly pick a rotation between zero and 3600 degrees. Let's just copy and paste this expression in the second field, changing the number in here. And let's do it one more time like so. So now if I hit play, this tube appears just randomly rotated on each frame. Okay, let's set this up for simulation using a vellum cloth. So vellum configure cloth like this. And here I wanna visualize the thickness. So that's how thick my rubber band is gonna be, how thick the individual points on this rubber band are gonna be. And those will be used for collision detection. In my case, as I will shrink the rubber band a bit, I'll just scale down the edge length a tiny bit to 0.2. And then down here, the stretch, I wanna decrease the stretch stiffness a bit, but increase my band stiffness quite drastically to the highest value like this making sure my rubber bands don't wrinkle, but leaving a bit of slack in their stretch constraint. And that's gonna work in our case because we'll employ a few other tricks to make sure that these individual rubber bands really shrink and contract towards the sphere. Okay, attach two nulls here. Let's call one out vellum geo and the other one goes into the pink slot here. Let's call it out underscore constraints like this. Okay, time to drop down our vellum solver. In this case, I don't wanna wire up the vellum geometry and the constraints directly. However, I wanna wire up the colliders directly. So collider goes into the last slot in here in the vellum solver. And before I do anything to the solver or in the solver, let's just go to the forces tab here and disable the gravity by setting this value to zero and then unchecking wind and also increasing the velocity damping to one. All right, now let's dive into the solver here. And the first thing we wanna do is spawn these rubber bands. And I wanna spawn one rubber band per simulation step. And in Houdini 19, there's the source input. And in here, I can wire in a vellum source. Let's do it like that. And then set its emission type to each frame and point it to the geometry and the constraints it should emit each frame. Luckily, we already prepared that. So the sub path here, I will point that to my OBJ geo one out vellum geo and the constraint sub path. I will point that to the out constraints. Let's go back to the geo level here, highlight the solver and just check it out. Hit play on the simulation. And we can see we are spawning all of these bands. However, they do not contract. They do pretty little currently. To have those rubber bands contract, I wanna do two things. A, scale down their rest length, so they contract by themselves by just scaling down these connections in between the individual points. And then also, in order to prevent slippage on this collision sphere here, add a bit of a force attracting those rubber bands to the center of the sphere. Let's dive into the vellum solver here and take care of the scaling down of the rest length first by using a vellum constraint properties node. And as I'm gonna do multiple things here, I wanna use a merge node and the merge out goes into the force and the vellum constraint property goes into the merge. So first thing you wanna do here is scale down the rest length scale here of our simulation of our object here to 0 0.3. Again, that's a value which I figured out with lots of trial and error when preparing the setup. Okay, back to our main geo here. Again, let's simulate this. And we can already see those rubber bands contracting onto that sphere. However, what might happen later is that some of those rubber bands start slipping as they land on the sphere and collide with other rubber bands quite off axis. So they might just slip off of the sphere. And to prevent that in the vellum solver in here, 
I'll add a pop attract force. So as vellum mainly works on point positions and point positions are what are being influenced by the pop forces as well, by the particle forces, we can use those in conjunction with vellum and the pop attract is there to just attract our individual points towards the center. In our case, the center of the goal is set to be zero. That's exactly the center of our sphere here. So we don't have to dial in anything here. Just in the forces tab, I wanna increase the force scale to 10 and its maximum distance. I wanna decrease that to 10. The last thing I wanna do each simulation step is make sure that the velocity is totally damped. So we are not carrying over velocity from a previous simulation frame. And I'm gonna do that using a popper angle, wiring this in the merge as well. And in here, just setting our velocity to be zero. In this case, Houdini casts this zero to be a vector. All right, let's save this. And one last thing I wanna make sure on the vellum source here, I wanna disable the activation after a few frames. So let's only activate this as long as our frame range is below, I don't know, 64. So now these rubber bands will only emit until frame 64. All right, let's go up one level and simulate this. So that kind of worked. It's being a bit jittery at the end, which we can resolve by on the Vellum Solver under the Solver tab, increasing the substeps. So for my final animation, and that still jitters a bit in the end, so it might need more substeps, I select four substeps with 32 constraint iterations each. However, as you've seen in the animation at the end, it's still a bit jittery. So we might feel tempted to increase the substeps to maybe six. So that took a good bit longer to simulate. However, results in a bit of a smoother animation. As always, when it comes to simulations, you just have to fiddle and tweak the parameters to your individual setup and always have to compromise between speed and simulation precision. However, let's just stick with that. And although I'll provide a rendering file set up to render in Octane, I won't go over shading here. I just wanna point out a few things which I'll do to the geometry before piping it into a render engine. So after the Vellum Solver, I'm gonna use the Vellum Post process to first add a bit of spatial blur here, smoothing out the geometry a bit, and then adding one subdivision of loop subdivision, increasing the geometry's resolution here. And finally, I wanna extrude my rubber bands to give them a bit of thickness. So when I scroll down in the Vellum Post process here, I can check extrude by thickness, which takes into account exactly these individual points scales that we set up in the Vellum Cloth. However, However, for rendering, as I figured out by just throwing away hours of render time, when you set the thickness scale to be exactly one, sometimes those geometries intersect just a tiny bit, which doesn't matter if you have a diffuse shader on there. However, as soon as you have a refractive material, such as in our case, these tiny intersections become very obvious and very flickery. So what I did is just set this thickness scale to 0.9, which still looks close to the original, however, now avoids intersections. And then finally, I added normals, just using the normal node, and then used that to render it in Octane. Again, a render file will be provided with the other scene files in here. But that's the setup, really easy rubber band ball using vellum. And if you wanna learn more about vellum or other parts of Houdini, such as using volumes, particles, or just getting started, or maybe are interested in even some Unreal Engine, or just plainly wanna support us, consider becoming a patron of ours, as it's with the help of our patrons that we are able to run in Tagma the way we currently do. And to everyone already supporting us out there, thanks so much, folks. It is through your help that we are able to do all this. And a very special thank you goes out to Lusion, Important Looking Pirates, Electric Theater, Rodeo Effects, Random 42 R&D, Side Effects, and Rafik Anadol Studios. Thanks so much for supporting us. So, as always, if you create artwork using one of our techniques, just tag us, send it along our way. We're always intrigued to see what you cook up. And until next time, as always, it is cheers and goodbye.